When Tom wins, he will be the most pro-labor governor in this country. So we need to do our part to make that happen. Let's give a warm welcome to the next governor of the state of Maryland, Tom Perez. Good morning. All right, good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here with you. Labor in the house. Uh, I tell you, folks, this guy right to my right, Chris Shelton, he's got game. Okay, folks? I was in a foxhole with you all in 2016. I remember it vividly. And I'm going to tell you the story because I remember it vividly. I remember watching day 40, day 45, not at the table. I remember reading the thing that really kept me up at night was reading the stories, Chris, about health care being cut off and learning about people who had family members who were in the middle of chemotherapy. And they, their life was in jeopardy. And now I didn't have any authority to order anyone to the table. And you're damn well sure, you know, I wasn't going to do anything other than use the collective bargaining process. Because I firmly believe that collective bargaining brings collective prosperity. Collective bargaining is what makes America strong. And so, folks, I made three calls. I called Chris, called a guy named Lonnie Stevenson, the head of the IBEW, the other local involved, and I called Lowell McAdam. Called him on a Wednesday, invited you all to my office. I said, come to my office on Sunday. I'll buy. And I did it on a Sunday because I didn't want anyone to be in the building. And I said, my goal is to see if we can get back to the table. And if the answer is no, I'll never tell anyone we met. They all said yes. They all came. They all agreed to come to the table. I suggested that rather than have negotiations in two different places, that maybe we consolidate them and do them at the Labor Department. And everyone agreed. And we started Tuesday, two days later. And I remember what I said the first day because, you see, I was a kid when my dad died. I was 12 years old, grew up in Buffalo, New York, still a Bills fan. Even though I'm running for governor of Maryland, people ask me, are you going to follow the Washington football team or the Baltimore Ravens? And I, I'm always going to be honest with people, none of the above. When you grow up in Buffalo, it's just it's part of you, you know? It's who you are, anyone here from Western New York. By the way, New York State's only professional football team. <laughs> hey, I'm just, I, I told you all I'm going to speak truth to power. You know, what exit is that off of the turnpike or whatever, okay? Just speaking truth to power. But in all seriousness, I said day one, you know, a week from Friday, my daughter graduates from high school. I was in seventh grade when my dad died. I, he wasn't at my eighth grade graduation. He wasn't at my high school graduation. And I'm damn well going to that graduation at 2 p.m. a week from Friday. And you know what? At 11 a.m. that Friday, we announced the settlement. And we never would have announced the settlement but for Chris Shelton, but for your entire negotiating team. You were tireless. We had many late nights together, including that Friday morning. It's always darkest before the dawn, and at about 1 a.m. that morning, I wasn't so sure we were going to get there. I'm dead serious. But I want to tell you, folks, you were well served. I was in the room, and I'm here to tell you that. This guy, and, and you were, what, one year into your presidency, if that, not even, and I'll tell you, the guy's got steely resolve. Your bargaining team was remarkable. And you know what? We came together. And you know what? We live in a world all too frequently of false choices. You know, I did a lot of work on police reform. And I hear people say to me, are you on the police side or are you on the community side? My answer is yes. <laughs> I'm on both. Because I know that when we have strong partnerships between the police and the community, we reduce crime and respect civil rights. Yeah. I know that because I used to enforce those laws. We reject false choices. You're either for unions or you're for business. When unions succeed, business succeeds. That's what this strike has proven. That's what this collective bargaining agreement has proven. You ratified it. 
You extended it. And by the way, the other strike I was involved in, it was not technically a strike, but it sure as hell was one, and that was the West Coast Ports in 2015. And you know what they did four years later? They extended their contract as well because it was win-win. I told you I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and you know what? After my dad died, my surrogate father was a teamster. And you know, my dad died June 29th, 1974. My surrogate father died June 29th, 2008. My surrogate mother, his wife died June 29th, 2012. You'll never be able to persuade me that that was a coincidence. And every June 29th, my best friend, his son and I, we get together and we have a cardiologist following us everywhere because we're scared to death that June 29th is going to be a bad day. But I'll tell you, he taught me, my surrogate father, he taught me about the union movement because he was a teamster. I never heard him swear in my life until 1981 when a guy named Ronald Reagan broke the air traffic controllers union. He was cursing up a storm. And why do I bring that up? You know, there's three kinds of leaders when it comes to unions. There's leaders who want to stab you in the back or sometimes right in the chest, people like Ronald Reagan, that wasn't just about breaking the air traffic controllers union, that was about breaking the union movement. That's what it was. And you know what, here's the sad truth. He made a lot of progress. And we gotta be honest about that. Because we saw union density decrease. We saw attacks, not only on public sector, but private sector bargaining. We saw those attacks. And you know what, that was unconscionable. The middle class suffered, workers suffered, families suffered. That's the bad news, folks. You know what? Here's the good news. The union movement is back big time across America. Look what's happening. Look what's happening at Amazon. Look what's happening at Starbucks. Look what's going to happen at Microsoft with neutrality, Chris. Look what's happening across America. Look what happened at John Deere. Look what happened at Kellogg's. Folks. Look at a public opinion. The, the American people have finally figured out again. The union movement brought us the weekend. The union movement brought us the middle class. The union movement brought prosperity for communities of color. Because you know what? If you look at labor union density, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. Bethlehem Steel was the ticket to the middle class for black people in Buffalo, for black people in Baltimore. I know that. And we've got to keep it up. And I mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, there's three kinds of leaders, presidents, governors, mayors, county executives. When it comes to unions, there was the Ronald Reagan types. And we've got one in Maryland. He does it with a smile, but he's gone after collective bargaining, Larry Hogan. He doesn't believe in it. He vetoes every collective bargaining bill that's brought to him. Collective bargaining is what brings us collective prosperity. He's disrespected our state workforce. And then, you know what, then there's the leader who isn't going to wake up in the morning, you know, trying to screw you, but, you know, he or she isn't going to wake up in the morning trying to help you out. And then there's people like Joe Biden. Joe Biden is the pro, most pro-labor president of my lifetime. Joe Biden does not need talking points about what the labor movement has done for America. I'm goddamn sick and tired of people complaining about what's going on. Don't complain. Organize. Vote. Get out there. Folks, we're in a battle for the soul of our nation. We have people who want to take your voting rights away. People who want to take your labor rights away. People who want to take your reproductive rights away. And they have a Supreme Court that's going to do it in about two weeks. My kids are going to have less rights than my wife and me. Memo to file. My wife and I have decided not to have any more children. She's 61. Okay? So in a basic level, that decision for us is not going to make a difference on a basic level, but it is going to make a difference. Because it's about, and by the way, it isn't, it isn't only about women, it's about everyone. And by the way, it's not simply about women, it's about women who are poor, families who are poor. Because folks who are wealthy, they can go and get it where they want. So folks, we are in a pitched battle right now. And when I read these stories, and we read them every time we have the White House and Congress where, you know, people are bedwetting and, you know, hand-wringing and doing all that. 
And you know what, folks? We have an infrastructure bill that's unbelievable. And we've got to implement it. And we've got to make sure. And I believe to my core, having talked to people in Maryland who would get up in the morning and they would get their kids in the car and they'd go to a place that, you know, the office park that had internet and they'd go to Zoom school in their car. Folks, broadband should be like water, an essential public utility that's affordable and accessible to everyone. And I applaud the administration for these investments. But folks, the implementation of this bill, we have to be working carefully on. Because if the, uh, if the directive is just get the money out fast, you know what's starting to happen, and I'm seeing this, is you go to the lowest bidder, and the lowest bidder is not the best worker. The lowest bidder is all too frequently the employer that cuts corners, that doesn't like the union movement. So we've got to, it, we've got to make sure these dollars are implemented smart. And that's what I'll do when I'm your governor in Maryland. And folks, I've been in a foxhole with you all a lot. I was in a foxhole with you when I was on the county council back in 2002, because CWA was organizing Comcast. You asked me to write a letter to ask them to remain neutral. I said, of course I will. And I did that. And then there was a ULP and they subpoenaed me <laughs> because they were trying to intimidate me at Comcast. My 22 year old uh, newly employed um, person who was answering the phone called me in very, very, bless you, bless all of you, in very, very, uh, she was bereft because she said, Tom, we just got a subpoena. What do I do? I said, get me the Washington Post. <laughs> so the next day, the headline was Comcast subpoenas Perez. The following day, Comcast withdraws subpoena, apologizes to Perez. The following week, Comcast invited me to sit in their box at the University of Maryland. I told Comcast to you know what off. <laughs> I'll get my own goddamn seat. Because that's what it's about. We need leaders like Joe Biden and others who understand that the union movement did bring us the middle class. And we've got to understand the moment we're in right now. Because, folks, I, I used to enforce the labor laws at the Labor Department and the civil rights laws, running the civil rights division. The civil rights laws I enforced were largely a product of the civil rights movement of the 60s. The labor laws I enforced were largely a product of the New Deal in the 30s. Those were the two most tumultuous decades of the 20th century. Decades of incredible famine, struggle, sacrifice, and ultimately, and here's the punchline, ultimately, accomplishment. We wrote the guts of the social compact during those two decades. We're in another one of these moments now where we have opportunity to rebuild what it's like to be a U.S. citizen, what it's like to be an American, what it's like to be a person living in America, whether you're documented or undocumented. We have this moment of opportunity, but what we have to recognize is that these windows of opportunity don't stay open indefinitely. That's why I need you to get everyone out and vote. I'm so humbled by the support I've had in Maryland from the people behind me. I'll get in a foxhole with you all any day of the week. We can win our race. And the union movement is a big part of it. We needed 67% of the State Federation of the Maryland AFL-CIO to get the endorsement of the State Fed. We got almost 90% because almost every union in Maryland has endorsed our campaign. And we have to remember, folks, this is a moment in time. And, and we have a, democracy is in, you know, democracy is on fire and it's a five alarm blaze. You know, most people are taught to run away from fires. You've been taught to run toward the fire. This guy's been a firefighter his entire life, even though he works for a union. He's been putting out blazes. He's been building our democracy, rebuilding our democracy. This is a moment in time to do it. This is a moment in time to make sure that infrastructure, broadband infrastructure is across this country. That is a absolute force multiplier for people everywhere. And the beauty of it is it doesn't discriminate. This will help white folks, non-white folks, urban, rural, suburban, everywhere. 
The work you're doing is going to make our democracy function more properly. So thanks for what you're doing. I need your help, and you have been just unbelievably helpful. And so I come to you with the sobriety born out of the fact that we do have many crises. But remember those two decades of the 20th century. And remember what the president said in his first address to Congress. We, are, we have a number of crises, but we have a number of opportunities. Let's seize those opportunities. Don't allow the naysayers to get you down because this is the moment in time where the union movement will thrive again because you're already thriving. When the union movement succeeds, we know America will succeed. Onward, together, all of you. Thank you very much.